This episode is powered by coffee, pure magic in a tiny cup. Do you know those moments when you question the way you take photos? Days when you think, what am I doing wrong? That I haven't had a big exhibition with my street photography yet, haven't published my own photo book or don't have 50,000 followers on Instagram. Depending on what your goals are, as street photographers, we all want to develop ourselves in some way. More creativity, more output, more consistency in your own photography or just more relaxation from the strenuous work routine through the evening photo walks. There are positive habits that can take us to the next level in street photography and will make us happier and better photographers. That will be the topic of today's video. But before we start, if you want to be sure to see regular videos on how to improve your street photography, then click subscribe and please hit the bell button as well if you like. So let's jump right in. For me, five really important habits have emerged that can improve your street photography a lot. Habit number one, let your camera be a part of everyday life. Whether Vivian Meyer or Enrique de Bresson, all world-renowned street photographers didn't go on a street photography trip every few months and let their cameras collect dust the rest of the time. Instead, they incorporated photography into their everyday lives. Vivian Meyer took photographs in the free time that her job as a nanny and housekeeper gave her. Enrique de Bresson took his camera with him basically everywhere. We should ask ourselves what photographs we want to take and what type of photography particularly impresses us. Is it more superficial photography from a perspective of a short-term visitor or tourist in what we consider to be exotic places? Or rather the long-term engagement with a place, a subject, a documentary approach that shows a thorough engagement with a topic? In street photography, being engaged with a topic can also mean that we know exactly when and where there is good light in the place where we live. We rarely manage to do this on short trips, unfortunately. My experience has been that if you don't have a camera with you, you simply overlook good potential photos. While you can practice a bit of composition using the hand framing trick I shared in one of my last videos, the physical absence of a camera means the reward effect is missing, which can cause us to miss photographic moments. So always take your camera with you when you leave your place. A handy camera like the Ricoh GR3 or the Fuji X100V fits in really every jacket pocket. Only practice makes perfect and if after 10 years and 3 hours of photography every day you have the famous 10,000 hours of street photography experience, you are certainly one of the top 1% of street photographers worldwide. Just kidding, I don't want to freak you out. You probably need a lot less than 10,000 hours. Regularity alone is the key. Passive experience can also help you. If you're ever bored, just pick up a good photography book instead of your smartphone or watch a YouTube documentary about your favorite photographers. Habit number two, have a playful attitude to life. Often when I tell other people that I do street photography and that it is more for me than just a hobby, they ask me, what do you take the photos for? Here I could think of dozens of uses for good street photography, but I also know that it's another thing they want to ask. Uh, they want to ask, hey, I don't understand the point of walking around the city with a camera for hours in all weathers. Why are you doing this? These questions often come from people who lead a very structured life. Permanent employment, 40-hour weeks, going out in the countryside with a family on weekends. And I understand that the unpredictable, unplanable nature of street photography is not for everyone. The photographic working method of many great street photographers has and had something playful, not result-oriented about it, not knowing what's coming and being open to what's lurking around the next corner. Pushing aside all expectations and ideas, improvising and acting spontaneously on the street are common characteristics among successful street photographers. Even if something goes wrong, for example, you are asked the question, hey, why did you take a photo of me? 
If you notice that being spontaneous and open are not your strength, I recommend meditation. Through regular meditation you learn to act in the here and now and to plan less and perhaps miss out on many good photos due to unnecessary pondering. Habit number three, be generous with constructive criticism. If you already have some experience in street photography, you should start to really constructively comment on the work of other photographers. So take on the role of a teacher like many great street photographers do. Start online. By this I don't mean cheering choruses like great photo, oh I love it on Instagram, but you should write comments in which you clearly state why you like a photo or why you don't. Unfortunately, constructive comments on Instagram and the like have become increasingly rare in recent years, so you'll definitely stand out if you make an effort to formulate why you like a particular photo. And good contacts with other street photographers can also develop as a result, which means you can perhaps receive personal feedback on your own work. When you give feedback to someone else, you ultimately benefit and learn too. So be generous with positive and critical constructive feedback, whether online or later offline. In this day and age, you will stand out from others and learn a lot yourself. Habit number four, learn to be criticized. Probably no well-known street photographers who serve as role models for us today became outstanding photographers completely independently of the criticism of others. There were people around these photographers who were able to honestly express their feedback and whose feedback was also heard. Only through honest criticism you have the chance to improve. Do the following. Invite friends who are interested in photography or fellow photographers to critique some of your photos in a special way. Tell them to only say what they don't like. Try to learn from it. Exclude points of criticism that are important to you from a personal perspective, such as the choice of a specific photographic subject with which you personally associate something meaningful. But Try to internalize all criticism regarding image structures, composition and so on. You will see that you can learn more from one honest negative criticism than from 100 positive feedbacks. Which leads us directly to number five and in my opinion this is the most important point. Habit number five. Always let your next photo be the most important one. If you receive honest negative feedback, there are different ways to react. Number one, you say why the person who gave the criticism is not right and thereby deny them the right to judge your work. Or two, you feel so hard hit by the criticism that you consider giving up street photography altogether and forever which will also mean that no one will dare to criticize your photography harshly or your work in general and honestly in the future. Or three, you accept the criticism and look forward to improving this one criticized detail and growing from it the next opportunity that arises. How do you think Gary Winogrand or Joel Myrovitz responded to honest informed criticism from each other during their long lasting friendship? I think they probably took it as an opportunity to improve and to get better in what they love to do. Try to distance yourself from photos that have already been taken so that any kind of honest criticism is possible. And remember, the next photo is always the most important for you because everything is still open here and there is a chance to get better and better from photo to photo. So what habits have helped you on your street photography journey? I'm really looking forward to your comments. As always, happy shooting. See you in the next video. Your Oliver.